Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Car Fishers. Today we're heading back out to the Green River for some more chum salmon fishing. It's early November right now, so last time the prime time to be hitting the uh, your local rivers for the chum salmon run in the Future Sound. Especially with clear sunny weather like this in uh, this time of year, you definitely want to get out when you can. All right, guys. I'm using the standard setup today, just slow fishings with a jig under the bobber, uh, 116 ounce jigs yeah. here in uh, pink and purple, and I also tipped it with a piece of bronze. I find this color combo to be my favorite for chunks, and tipping it with some bronze just give it that extra kick. It was raining yeah. for the past week, so water level came up really high and it finally settled down today for us to be out. That's why in the winter time it's rare to have opportunities like this where fishing is good and the water level also works. Yep, so gotta get out there where you can. Our name of the game here is uh, keep casting. Float that bobber down over your hole. I came out in the evening today with about an hour of sunlight left. The temperature is starting to get much colder in the mid 40. One thing I learned uh, for Robert fishing is that you do have to constantly adjust the depth of your line. And that goes for each time you go to the same hole. The water level might have rise or gone down, so you have to just adjust it to make sure that you can get down there to where the fish are and to also work the water column. Sometimes it'll be in the middle. What I do now is I try to find where the bottom is and start to work uh, off it a couple inch for a couple casts, then go up a couple inch for a couple casts and change it up and see what the fish likes. Make sure to keep an eye out on your bobber. I'll tell you whether you're floating correctly or not. In most cases, you want that bobber to be vertical. If it's not, most likely that's an issue and you want to go ahead and bring it back in and check it out or readjust the depth of your line. Another important thing is to make sure you do bend your line. A lot of times, uh, if you don't, the water current will carry it out and will drag your uh, flows. It also makes it really hard to set the hook if you get a bite because you have all that extra slack line uh, laid out in the water. And if you're in a spot with uh, multiple people, it could uh, tangle up with their lines. Oh, there we go. Hi. Oh my. I didn't bring my... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't bring my, my net. <laughs> That's a lucky stuff, man. Uh, now bring your net, it's the move, dude. <laughs> Uh. So it's all you today. Oh yeah. Oh, here we go. Bobber down. Oh. Oh, okay. He's a good one. Pull the drags. Same battle plan. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, good thing that logs out of the way now. Yeah, I know, right? Super nice. Cool. Yeah, man, this is a good one right here. Let's go. You can walk all the way back up here. Okay. Put him on the bank. I know, right? <laughs> Fortunately. <laughs> oh, right, he's a good one. It's bright. Looks like a she, actually. Oh. Look at that tug. Oh. Pulling so strong.
Oh, it knows. <laughs> it's like my friend are here to rescue me. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh. Oh, my wrist. <laughs> Mistake going squiddy yesterday. <laughs> oh, yup, yup, yup. Wait for that log. Oh, nope, not going down yet. So much energy. Mm -hmm. Real fun. Real good fight. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. They're coming together. <laughs> They're gonna join forest. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this thing's not going anywhere. It's still pulling drag. Oh, pulling. Oh. Oh, it's all the way out there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh no, there was another one that just jumped right there, dude. Yeah, right there. There's a bunch of them coming up. Keep going. <laughs> no, but that's still time. That's still time. Not in the log. Not like this. Oh man, yeah. Oh jeez. No net. <laughs> oh, I don't want to get that tangle up in the blue thing. Okay. All right. He's tired. He's getting tired. Almost in. He's telling his friend, "Don't come here." Not like this. <laughs> oh, my freaking wrist, man. I'm about to tag team this one. <laughs> oh, no, there it's right there. It's almost in. Okay. Oh. Right, let me try to get him away from that blue one. Stuff, man, good looks, good looks. All right, who needs a net? Needs a net? <laughs> Let's go. Oh, this one's bright, super bright. Okay, oh, this one's a real good one. Oh, let's go, super bright. So this is one of the brightest chum I've ever got and I'm pretty excited to uh, make some dishes out of her. I'll show you guys that in probably the next episode. In this episode, I'll be showing you guys how to cure the eggs. Nice bobber down man, get it.
go. Get it. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. First fish. Okay, so here's the simple way to cure your eggs. The first step is to prep them, and all you're gonna do is just dry them out first. You just uh, put them on some paper towels and uh, get them as dry as you can. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is to clean out as much of the bloodline as you can. So to do this, just make an insertion of every uh, couple inches along it, and then squeeze out the blood with a paper napkin and just try to get as much as you can. Okay, you're going to want to do the same thing on the other snake sack. And once you've done that, they're ready to go and ready to be cured. All right, so now for the curing process. This is pretty simple right here. You're gonna find either a container or here I have a Ziploc bag and put the clean eggs in. One thing you can do to uh, help the cure get, uh, penetrate more of the egg is to cut them up into more manageable size and to kind of butterfly them. The cure I'm using today is the Pro Cure in red color. It's a pretty popular one. And you can pick this up at the local tackle shop. I got mine at the outdoor emporium. And you can add in other mixture to experiment. Once they're inside the container or bag, go ahead and put in some of the Pro Cure into it. You just need to put in a little bit of this stuff and not too much. Here I accidentally put in way too much. Once you got them in, go ahead and just stir it up and make sure get it into as much of the eggs as possible and as much uh, coverage as possible. Make sure you're wearing gloves when you're doing this so you don't get stain over your hand. It'll make cleanup a lot easier if you do. So yeah, I highly recommend using gloves. Alright, once you get a good mix in, go ahead and put it in the fridge for about one to two days and then they'll be ready to go. You can either start using them or if you want to save them, you can throw them in the freezer and they'll be good for up to a year. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you guys find it helpful and that I guess you are inspired to get out there and try for some of these chumps. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. And good luck out there and fish on!